Hello, welcome to Bits and Pieces of My Life. I'm Les Edwins. I was born on a hot summer day in July, July 23rd, 1960. My parents are Charles Edwins, better known as Chuck Edwards, and Irene Edwins. I have three brothers, Ron Edwins, Myron Edwins, Jeff Edwins, and my sister Charlene. We come from a musical family. Well, I, I guess so, because my dad, you know, was a very popular guitarist in the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area. He played everywhere. Everybody knew him. So, of course, we had music in the house all the time. So how could we not be musicians? My mom sang. You also hear all the time. Oh, it was like, you know, opera singing or something like that. Yeah, I remember all that stuff. You know, now I don't remember the first couple of years of my life. I was too young. But then I do remember when I was three years old. I had some kind of fascination with drums that I didn't know of at the time, but the fascination was beating on pots and pans. I would take my mom's cake pans and her frying pans and beat the devil out of them. I mean, bang, 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 you know? And my mom was like, oh my God, what you doing? You know, my cakes are all lumpy. Every time she'd bake a cake, and she'd flip it upside down and have knots and lumps on it because I've been beaten to death. <laughs> you know, that's one of the things I remember at three years old. The other thing I remember at three years old, I was fascinated with bacon flour. I used to sit on the floor and just, and I was just covered, looked like the snowman, <laughs> really. And my mom was like, oh my goodness, I got to go give this boy a bath. And I tell you what, I couldn't stand that bath. My mom had a little, little tub, you know, and put me in some warm water. And she would just put soap all over me. And I'm like, oh, oh, I was crying. I was crying so much I couldn't stand it. Yeah, man, I couldn't stand it. I remember those, those, those times, you know. You know, and playing on those pots and pans, little did I know that, you know, it was the drumming being instilled with me. It was the music. You know, it was the soul. It was the things that I was hearing. My dad's band practicing at the house all the time. And it was just in my in my soul and my blood, you know. It was a bloodline. I couldn't help it, you know. It wasn't like I went out there and said, hey, I want to be a drummer. It was just, I just started beating on pots and pans. So my parents said, well, looks like he's going to be a drummer, so we'd be better get him a set of drums. So they went out there and got me a toy set of drums. And about this time, I was like approaching four years old, so I was a little strong little kid. So I took those drums, man, and I beat the devil out of them. I mean, I beat the devil out of them. Like the pots and pans, all bang, 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 bang. and those drums had little paper heads. And I just broke every one of the heads. So there's like, oh my goodness, we might have to get him a real set of drums. So in the meantime, what I did, I mean, I don't know where I got this kind of, uh, you know, this, this inventing mind, but I made up my own set of drums. Yeah. I took a couple of boxes of cardboards and put the cardboard on the floor and cardboard over here and a cardboard box over here. And I got me a, a clothes hanger, the metal ones, and bent it and got some toilet paper and about balled it up, you know. And, and then I turned around and put some tape on it and stuck it on the top of the hanger some kind of way and had it bent so that I can, I can do this on the box on the floor. And I made my own drums. And my parents said, yep. That's when they realized, yeah. We, we're going to have to get him a real set of drums. So they did that. So at that time, my brothers were dibbling and dabbling in, you know, instruments. My brother Myron was playing the bass. My brother Jeff was playing the guitar. Ron, you know, he was trying to play a trombone at first. But he didn't like the armature, you know, like it was just hard, to, you know, and it would hurt, hurt your lips. You know, your lips were like, you got to have that armature to blow you know, horn. So he ended up playing the keyboard. So there you go. Now you got the whole band. My dad had his whole band at the house. So my dad used to rehearse us all the time. When he wasn't playing or rehearsing his band, he was rehearsing the kids. And, you know, it's kind of like the Jackson family, man. My dad was, you know, he's a little bit hard on us. I mean, because he was just a, a consummate professional. I mean, he wanted us to be professional, so he would he would lay into us, boy, you know. And I mean, I would sit up there and cry on the drums. I'd be crying. I'd be like, "Oh my God, oh no, I don't want to play this song no more," because over and over 
and over. And a lot of the stuff was blues. My dad liked to play a lot of blues and, you know, funky soul blues and jazz type of numbers. You know, man, I just, I just wasn't feeling that. You know, I, I didn't, I just didn't like it. So it was a little hard for me to really get into it and, you know, and, uh, and do what he wanted me to do. So, so he used to, you know, have us practice over and over and over until we got it. And so, you know, and, you know, and, and, and so be it, because you know what happened is that me and my brothers were good enough, you know, from my father's tutelage, we were good enough to actually go around the neighborhood to these little half bras is what we called them. You know, some people call them a bar, you know, pub or whatever, but they were called half bras back in Pennsylvania. We lived in a little town at that time called Cannonsburg. And we would go around with our little instruments. I'd take my little snare drum with a little stand, and my brothers played their little guitars and bass, and, you know, and Ron had some kind of little play keyboard type of thing, you know, and we'd go there and play a couple of songs for the, the patrons. And I tell you, we come out of there with like $3, and we were like rich. I mean, we were happy as clams. We'd play maybe two half rods and make $3 and go straight, splitting it up, and then go right to the candy store. And I tell you right now, 50 cents or something like that bought a lot of candy in those days. And we would like have a bag full of candy. We were happy, man. It was like, oh, man, we got to keep doing this, you know. And mean, meanwhile, my, my dad was playing around, you know, all the surrounding areas, Pittsburgh and everywhere else, you know. And uh, he had some records out at the time, you know. So he, what he used to do, and he taught us how to hustle. Yeah, Pops taught us how to hustle. He would give us a box of records, and he would drive us around in the neighborhood and we would walk up to the neighbor house, you know, knock on the door and say, hi, how you doing? Uh, would you like to buy one of my dad's records? That uh, was one dollar. Yeah, yeah. He, we would go sell records for a dollar, my dad's stuff like that, you know. And so we were, we were learning the trade of hustling even then. So as we moved forward, you know, as I was getting a little bit older, you know, somewhere around six years old, I remember a time when my dad was playing in Pittsburgh. And his drummer got sick. So what did he do? He got me. And I was scared to you know what. <laughs> I was like, you, you you want me to play with you tonight? He said, yeah, son. You know, my, my drummer's sick. He can't make it, so I got to bring you with me. I was like, oh, my God. What am I going to do? I'm so scared now. So I'm up there on stage with these older gentlemen, you know. And I'm looking around and I'm waiting for my dad to count the song out. And he just turned around, you know, my dad usually didn't say what he was playing. He would just count it out. So I just had to listen to it and just, I figured, hey, you know what? Dad rehearsed us so much, I know I had the 2-4 going. So let me just stick with the 2-4 and I should be okay. And I tell you what, we got into the groove and everybody in the band was looking back at me and it was like, wow, this kid... It's playing this kind of stuff. And I was so happy because I was like, oh, yeah, they must really like me, you know. And, you know, the favorite part about that playing at the club is that on break time, since I couldn't stay in the, you know, the audience, I was a young kid, I would have to go in the kitchen. And they had these two big sisters, man. I mean, I'm talking about they were back to burning. And if you don't know what I mean, I'm talking they were cooking it up like a mofo. I'm talking about. I was happy as I don't know what because I got to sit in the kitchen and eat me chicken and greens and, you know, ribs. And, oh, my God, I was like, I don't care how long I got to be here, as long as I can stay in the kitchen because that's where I want to be because I get to eat all the food and stuff like that. So it was, wow, what a wonderful memory I have of that. That was my very first gig, very first professional gig, you know. And then as 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 time went on, you know, you know, rehearsing, you know, and that kind of stuff at the house of dad, you know, we went to New York City, you know, and somewhere around this time I was in the early 70s. And we ended up, you know, signing a record contract with this company called Ghetto Records up in New York City. And uh, we had put out the first song, you know, that we had at the time, I believe it was uh, Someone Like You. And school is in. And uh wow. You know, that was really cool because I was probably, I would say, approaching nine years old, somewhere around that time. And not too long after that, we ended up coming to California, San Francisco. I was 10 years old when we came to San Francisco. 
And uh, what a beautiful city it was at the time, you know, because it looked like, to me, it looked like Disneyland, you know. And I was like, well, I was fascinated with all the lights and the cable cars and the Golden Gate Bridge and all these things. I was like, wow, this looks like, like you know, like, you know definitely looks like, you know, Disneyland. And, uh, wow, moving to San Francisco was a choice that my parents made because in Pennsylvania, there wasn't a whole lot of opportunities, you know, especially for black musicians, you know. So we moved out to California looking for better opportunities to be able to to, to play and uh, get recognized as a band. And I tell you what, that's when we ended up on the streets of San Francisco. And I'll tell you about that in the next episode. So stay tuned. And the next episode, if you really enjoy this so far, you can get the next episode on my website, lesedwins.com for a small purchase. And uh, I think you'll enjoy the journey. So look forward to bits and pieces of my life. Episode two.